Well, bummer. This is the only piece that you need to be able to switch that head around. And make sure you stick around to the end because there's one thing I would do differently next time that will make your installation and your modification that much easier. You ever wish that when your trailer was attached to a truck that you could put down the tailgate all the way? I need a few more inches between the tongue jack and the tailgate to be able to put the tailgate down and load things on and off when the trailer is attached. Thankfully, there's a way to fix that. Let me show you how. So a lot of trailer tongue jacks, you can take the head off and rotate them. They just attach to the spindle and the head is independent of the actual jack. Unfortunately, I took this guy apart and there's a rectangular plate welded to the top of the pole. It does not allow me to rotate the head or switch it around in the holes at all 90 degrees. Because if, if I could just take this head and move it 90 degrees, there's plenty of clearance between the pole and the tailgate. It's just the motor head that's in the way. So what I did is I went out and I got a Lippert power jack. And although it doesn't come out of the box ready to do what I wanna do, I wanna show you how to modify it with two bolts that allow you to put the tailgate down with this new tongue jack. So let's go ahead and get this installed and then I'll show you the modification. The very first thing you wanna do is make sure that your wheels are chocked. Then go ahead and couple the trailer to the truck and lift the trailer jack so it's all ready as if you were going to pull away and the trailer jack's not supporting any weight. And then disconnect your battery. If you already have an electric tongue jack that you're switching out, go ahead and trace the power supply back to the trailer and unhook it. So once the trailer is attached to the truck, wheels chalk, and there's no weight on the trailer jack, go ahead and remove the bolts holding the trailer jack to the tongue frame. Remove the split plate and lift the whole thing out. and then set the new one in. So because I'm installing this trailer jack brand new, it's not already attached to the vehicle, I'm gonna take it off to do the next step. However, if yours is already attached and you're just rotating the head, you could totally do this next step on the trailer. So then you can come in and remove these two weather covers on the sides of the jack head and remove the bolts. They are half inch. And now that that's there, we should be able to just remove the entire head and motor assembly. Well, bummer. So the research I did on this jack, all the pictures and everything that I saw showed that these holes, these two top holes, were also here as blanks, just untapped holes. And that's what we we're gonna do. We we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees and tap those in. All right, it's not gonna make a difference because we'll just drill two new holes right here because they were gonna be two empty holes and we were gonna have to tap those anyway, but we'll just drill two new ones. So I think I'm gonna take this off so that we can tip it and not get any shavings down in that screw. Again, all the research I did showed that there were two blank holes supposed to be in here. Apparently my version does not have it. So you, yours may already have the holes, it may not. Just take the head off and figure it out. If it doesn't, then you're just gonna have to drill a hole. Uh, we're going to take this over to the workbench so we can do it a little easier. Um, but if you want to do it here, go ahead and just stuff some paper towels and stuff in there so that you don't get any shavings down into the screw. But before I take this off, what I want to do is use the head and the bolts to show me exactly where I need to drill those holes. So I'm going to put this on, back on and I'm going to rotate it to where I want it. And I'm going to check the tailgate before I do anything else. Sweet, nice and clear. That's going to work great. So I'm gonna leave that right there. So when you put the head on, make sure you look through those bolt holes and make sure that the, the tube is actually all the way up into the head. Right now I can see mine is only halfway through. I'm just gonna rotate it around, you felt it click down. And now I'm gonna look in and now I can, I can see that it's actually fully into and seated on the tube. So now we're gonna take those bolts, set them in, give them a whack and show us where we need to drill out the new holes to then tap them.
Awesome. Let's take this out and go drill those holes. Let's go ahead and shove some paper towel down in there just so we can pull it out and any metal shavings are not going to get caught down in the screw. Then we're just going to take a punch, punch it right in the center. And then on the other side. Now, if you already have those holes on your model, you can totally skip this point. So it's a 5 16th bolt. And I was able to grab a 5 16 um, taper tap. Put a link to this down in the description below. Because this, if you already have the holes, this is the only piece that you need to be able to switch that head around. Um, but for a 5 16 I'm going to use a 17 64 bit. Uh, when I looked it up, that was what the re recommended size was, so then go ahead and tap it at 5 16 Got a little lubrication here. And I don't have a traditional tap handle, which would be much nicer, but I'm just going to use a crescent wrench here on the end of this tap. And we're just going to, as straight as possible, cut that in and then turn it back a little bit to release those cut shavings into the relief cuts. I'm just going to keep going until we get all the way through. Perfect. Sweet, let's go reinstall. Moment of truth. Double click, line it up, nice. Alright, so after checking to make sure that it fits properly and the bolts go in, I'm going to drop a few drops of thread lock on these bolts and run them in. Well, once we got the jack all bolted onto the tongue, now all we have to do is wire up the power. Um, Lippert does not give you a little eyelet at the end, but I had one, so I'm going to use it. I'm just going to crimp this on here, and then we're going to run it through the, the wire loom up and under the trailer and connect it to the power source. Now, unfortunately, the cable supplied with the jack was not long enough for my RV, so I had to put an extension on. Lippert, if you're listening to this, add another two feet and let us cut off the rest. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Definitely makes a, for a pain in the butt. And hey, if you're into DIY projects and RVing, which I assume you are because you're watching a DIY RV video, Make sure you check out our groups. I'll put a link in the description box below. Add in a few zip ties to tidy everything up. Attach your battery back up and give it a go. Love it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So if you want to stop dropping your tailgate and put in a tailgate assist, I highly recommend the one from DZ. It was super easy to install and really makes a difference in letting the tailgate down for both me, my wife, and my kids. And hey, if you need a ladder that you can use while hooked up to the camper, I'll leave a link to this guy down below and also a link to the video on how to install it. Super inexpensive and really helps out with the tall truck bed. Well, there you go. Turning the head on an electric tongue jack. Leaves room for the tailgate to come down while it's attached to the trailer. Now the other way you could go about this is getting a longer shank on your hitch. However, that really messes with the physics of towing the trailer and putting the, the attachment point a little bit further out. Wasn't, a, wasn't a, a route I was willing to go and it was going to be more expensive to buy a longer shank hitch than it was to be buying a different tongue jack. 
And if you already have this tongue jack that can be swiveled, you know, no brainer, easy way to go. So the only thing I'd do differently next time if I were to do it again is if I had a unit like mine that did not have the other two holes already pre-drilled, is that I would probably leave it in place to do it instead of taking it off like I had it. I would drill, I would, I would put the head on, I would mark one hole, drill it, tap it, set the head on again, and put the bolt in. Then, it's obviously gonna be, you do it on that side, and then when it's, you're marking the second hole here, the head unit is not threaded. So I would have stuck my drill bit in through there to make sure that that hole was exactly where it needed to be. Because I had a little bit of trouble, my, my holes were just slightly off because the drill bit walked over on the workbench. Whereas if you had that sleeve guiding the drill bit into the exact place on the tube that you need to go, you wouldn't have had that problem. So if you got something out of this video, go ahead and show me some appreciation down below. Until next time, I'm Joshua. Happy trails.